<clears throat> All right, I am apparently live. I wonder if I can trim this part out. Okay, we got sound. Yes, we do. <clears throat> awesome. So, don't need to really watch myself on YouTube. So I apologize in advance if you hear anything weird going on. We had a fire a few days ago. I'm fine, the cats are fine, everything is fine. But uh, ever since then, the fire trucks have been hanging around and around this time they do things. Anyway, so yeah. So welcome to my live stream. I am Kit, your friendly feminist cat lady spinster. Due to the majority vote, it seems that people prefer a more structured live stream. So I will be endeavoring to make this more structured than casual. And I will also, at the end, add timestamps and hopefully be able to trim down the beginning where I'm making sure that everything is working properly. Anyway, um, it's been about three minutes. Time flies when you're live streaming. So I guess we will just go ahead and begin. Um, so back in March, <laughs> City Man sent me this video by The Authentic Observer, and I'm sorry it took so long to get to it. I try to comment, react, whatever to things in a timely manner, because obviously when people are looking for it, it's more relevant and your video is more likely to be viewed. And well, you know, things happened, and as you can probably tell from the background, I'm moving, and tomorrow my building manager is going to come do something for marketing. So I decided to move the live stream to today, to today since I have that power. Anyway, um, <clears throat> next week's live stream will be on Thursday as usual, unless she needs to do something else in my unit, which hopefully not because I really don't understand why they wouldn't want to wait until I've moved out and they can repair some things that they didn't repair for me, but whatever. Anyway, so this is going to be, I believe, a long video. Yes, it is 56 minutes long. So I guess we will go ahead and begin because we're going to be here for a while. You know who I always admired? Galadriel, the beautiful elf queen who wielded astonishing power. And I just saw that skull with like, are those snakes and Huh. Now I am slightly unnerved. <laughs> influence, proving that feminine women can not only be strong, but that their strength actually comes from their femininity. That they are powerful because of, and not in spite of, how feminine they are. A character who represented, one could argue, the higher ideals of femininity, something special and precious and, dare I say, sacred. A character who didn't need to be able to beat people up in order to be valuable, have an impact on the world, be a force for good, be strong. Why can't a woman be more like a man? Here's a question for the class. What might we call someone who saw such an unapologetically feminine character and thought, no, she needs to be more like a man to truly be strong, and so wiped away everything essential to who she was, replacing it with, and I quote, piss and vinegar, and gave her a great big sword that is broken because she has killed so many orcs. I beg your pardon? Yes, why can't a woman be more like a man? As a male woman, she wasn't good enough as she was, you see, so they decided to fix her by just giving her a massive sword. The symbolism there is quite appropriate. Why can't a woman take after a man? Do we have a word for those people who see women as second-rate men? Why can't a woman take after a man? I think there's a word for that. It's a word that's thrown around a lot, often undeservedly, but I think this might be one of those instances where we found some real-life misogynists. Why can't a woman be like you? This is a special kind of misogyny, though, children, that gets to pretend it's the opposite. It's evolved developed a new variant, if you will. So I have to admit, I am not a Lord of the Rings fan. I did not read the books. I saw the first three movies back 15 years ago. Didn't care for it. But I, I think it's a bit harsh to say that writing a woman as a man, whatever that even means, means someone is a misogynist. I mean, to me, 
to me when people when writers rely on tropes of oh men do this women do this and when a woman does what a man does or a man does what a woman does it's just funny or it makes them strong or whatever that's just lazy writing kind of like how in the 90s we had all those stupid sitcom dads who you know couldn't do anything right and it was funny because they were a man trying to wash dishes but they couldn't figure it out so the woman had to come in and save the day that was lazy writing become less easy to spot because to add insults to injury it's all done in the name of female empowerment why come I mean, maybe, maybe they think that more women will watch the series if they write a woman. I don't even know. I mean, why can't you just write people like people? Why does it have to be, oh, this is how a woman is. This is how a man is. But anyway, maybe they think that by doing it that way, they'll attract more women and be like, see, we're all for women's empowerment. But that just seems like a really lazy way. It's like, it's like saying... Well, women are this way, and if I write women as the way I would write a man, you see that makes her automatically strong because men are automatically strong. This is why I don't really care for much mainstream entertainment. <laughs> they take the easy way out. Hmm. Can't a woman behave like a man? Uh -huh. Not just talking Amazon's new Lord of the Rings. I'm also seeing this in the culture, in real life, and in individuals. And I've just had enough of it now. Behave yourselves. I'll be full of piss and bloody vinegar in a minute, I'll tell you that now. This video isn't about Galadriel specifically, um, though I do talk about her more at the end, but it's about the wider issue I feel we have with femininity. Because I do think we have issues with femininity, guys. I really do. What's going on with that, my darlings? Do we all have mummy issues, do we? You can tell me. Just sit back and relax while we go through where the femininity hurt you. Don't be frightened. I'll be gentle. You're a woman. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Galatea, and this is Asis, my dearly departed. Why can't a woman be more like a man? And today, the topic of discussion is on the rather strange phenomenon of everyone standing by and applauding female empowerment while femininity itself is being bent over and fucked. Why can't a woman be like me? Okay. <laughs> Desecration is the act of depriving something of its sacred character or the disrespectful, contemptuous or destructive treatment of that which is held to be sacred. Why is thinking something women never do? I know that I promised. Why is logic never even tried? My next video would be on Mulan. Straightening up their hair is all they ever do. Me and my promises. Why don't they straighten up the mess that's inside? Thank you, Rob, for calling me out on that as I made that promise by saying, and I quote, It's always hilarious to watch Galatea explain that she has videos planned so that they will be released by a certain date in some kind of order. This amuses me because her release schedule has all the composure and predictability of a cat in a minefield. I did not appreciate that, Rob. It is irrelevant that you were correct. You still contradicted a lady, and that is bad manners. Zero out of ten for your loyalty and blind trust. When I set up my cult, you will not be invited to join. Rob's off the list. However, you... I'm trying to remember something that I heard from The Lost World, which was a TV series based on the book by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle about... What was it? You never call a lady a liar or whatever. Marguerite said that to Roxton and he said, oh, but you're not a lady or something like that. I really should rewatch that series, but I've packed my DVDs, so. And my DVD player, so. You do get a 10 out of 10 for your word choice because I greatly enjoyed that description. I'm almost tempted to change my channel name to Cat in a Minefield. <laughs> it feels fitting somehow. I like it. I feel all the time like a cat on a hot tin roof. This might be the one, guys. This might be the video that finally gets me into trouble. Jump off the roof, Maggie. Jump off it. Maybe I have nine lives and I just haven't used them all up yet. How many are left? I'm not keeping track. Cats jump off roofs and they land uninjured. It's so exciting, like a lottery. Will today be the day? Fuck it, let's go. Do it, jump 
jump. So the Mulan plans got thrown out the window because I am in a minefield and Amazon decided to throw a surprise Galadriel at me. So, like a cat, see what I did there, Rob? I had to jump onto this topic because I realised I had a lot to talk about that is just more important than how much the new Mulan movie sucked. Even though actually the topics of the videos, the two videos are quite similar, really, and both deal with femininity and fucking up female characters for no reason. Um, but this, this is broader. Firstly, let me state loud and clear right now at the beginning so there can be no misunderstandings. I know there will be. I will see you in those comments misunderstanding anyway. But just right up front so you can't pretend to not have heard this. I have absolutely no problem with female characters who can fight. No problem with more masculine female characters. No problem with butch female characters. And nor do I think that every woman has to fit into a specific box of femininity. I think those stories are important and that those women, less feminine women, also deserve to see themselves represented. I am- Well, that's good to know, but I can tell you from experience that it doesn't really matter what you say in your videos, people will interpret it however, however it makes more sense for their narrative. But, you know, I appreciate the thought and I'm sure she already knows that because she has a way larger audience than I do and she's been doing, and she's been doing YouTube for a longer time. I'm annoyed because it is not enough just to write non-feminine characters, is it? They also have to go and actively stamp out femininity wherever they find it. Mm -hmm. Also, the other thing is the non-feminine characters they do write are often really one-dimensional and badly written anyway and just clearly just done to make a statement. So they don't... Well, yeah, I mean, if your idea of good writing is, oh, hey, take that woman and make her do something that a man would do, I can imagine that the rest of their writing wouldn't really be inspirational. Even give them any respect. Anyway, so I, I have a problem with that, basically. But yeah, in, in, in principle, I don't have a problem with more masculine female characters. Okay, I am annoyed because they have taken a pre-existing feminine character and decided that femininity is somehow degrading and embarrassing. So any female character with influence has to be shoved into a masculine ideal of strength, no matter how ridiculous, because being a woman is no longer good enough anymore. According to feminism! So what? the second thing, to just to state out, up front and get out of the way, Yes, Tolkien did make references to Galadriel being tall and athletic during the First Age, which is not when this show is set anyway. It's set during the Second Age, when she's a lot older. But that aside, um, I'm sorry. I still can't help being sceptical that they decided to seize on him once describing her as Amazonian and going, yes, we have this crumb that we can now interpret to totally change everything we know about her character to make her an orc-slaying action hero. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest. Well, no. <laughs> what what does feminism have to do with how some writers write a show? And also, where did she get the idea that feminism was involved in this show? I mean, I don't really think Tolkien is like a feminist, or was, I should say, because he's been dead for a while, was a feminist himself. So I don't really think that we have to look to his books for like feminist inspiration or anything like that. I'm very confused as to why feminism is involved in this at all. Cause I mean like not everything is feminist and that's okay. Not everything has to be feminist. I think I understand now why this was sent to me. I don't believe that they made Galadriel like this in order to, as they say, explain how she became the wise elf she became. Shit like this has happened far too often for me to believe that. I don't believe them. I just don't believe you. I don't. Well, <clears throat> I can't, I'm not a mind reader, but I think a lot of people think that, hey, we're gonna, no, Eleanor, we're gonna put someone in battle. It doesn't matter if they're male, female, adult, child, does not matter. We're gonna put them in battle to explain how they became the adult they became because it's, it's kind of a shortcut. I think it's pretty believable that being a soldier or a warrior or whatever would change someone and help them grow into whatever they became. And I'm really confused as to why it's so hard to believe that in her younger days, Galadriel could have been an orc slayer and then, you know, became the person she grew into be in the movies, books, whatever. Not a Lord of the Rings fan, but it, it, it just... Not everything has a message, and to be fair, not everything has to have a message. Sometimes entertainment is just entertainment for entertainment's sake, especially if 
it's of low quality. Although, I mean, has Amazon even released their Lord of the Rings series yet? I'm not going to watch it because I try to avoid things by Amazon. And I really don't like them being involved in every aspect of human life. <sighs> so, yeah, but I'm going to look this up while she talks. I don't believe they did it to be true to the mythology and to add depth and dimensions to her character. I may be proven wrong when the show comes out. Who knows? Maybe they will have handled her character with nuance and care rather than just made her a cringy vehicle for their political message. But pro Okay. Apparently it will come out on uh, September 2nd, so we still have a ways to go. Probably not. I think they did it because they're a bit embarrassed by such a feminine woman being held in such high esteem. So loved the opportunity to wreck on her and do a hashtag girl boss action. Um, so there's like nothing girl boss about killing people or orcs, but you know, just saying. But um, where is all this coming from? Who is they? Is it Amazon? Okay. The writing team behind Lord of the Rings now includes Jason Cahill, Justin Doble, and Helen Shang. Are they the ones that are going? I mean, do we even know how much of a role Galadriel will have in this series? I'm assuming a prominent one. Although I really don't remember her being in the Lord of the Rings movies that much. But I mean, is this like a coming of age story for Galadriel? I'm very confused. <laughs> Action era. They took Galadriel, one of the most powerful elves in Middle Earth, a woman with outstanding levels of power, influence, wisdom, courage, and strength, who had these things because of and not despite her femininity. And they made her fit a masculine ideal of strength because actually, in their minds, it seems the ideal and most powerful human being is a male one. You motherfucking misogynists. This idea seems to be rampant now in feminism. It's ridiculous. What? Honestly, it seems that no one idealizes masculine traits as much as feminists do. I'm gonna need an explanation for that one. They seem to be the people that truly believe that to be like a man is the superior option seem to be the ones who want to erase everything that makes women wonderful, the ones to have the most disdain for femininity, the most likely to see it as weak, the mo most likely to dismiss feminine women as useless bimbos, the- Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Where is all this coming from? Is this really all stemming from the Lord of the Rings? Because I obviously am a feminist. I know a lot of feminists. I watch a wide variety of YouTube channels, some of which are run by people who actively call themselves feminists. And I don't like, is it, I've never seen any of them say, oh yes, if you're physically strong, that is what women should be. That is the only way to be strong. I, I've never seen anyone say anything that is stereotypically considered feminine is weak. I mean, I in my younger years did go through that. Oh, anything girly. I don't want anything to do with because I'm not like other girls. I mean, I do think there are women out there who are very feminine. And when I say feminine, I mean stereotypically feminine, who look down on women who are not feminine in that way. And I think there are women who are not feminine, who look down on ultra feminine women because that is just what people do. People judge, people are really just kind of horrible. <laughs> But I, that's not like a feminism thing, that's a people thing. Feminism acknowledges that just because you are a woman and you like whatever stereotypically feminine things you like, it doesn't make you less than a man. I think maybe back in like the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of women who felt they had to be like a man, what was it, have it all to justify having a career, you know, in order to have a career, you have to prove that you can have and raise kids. You have to be superwoman. Men didn't have that pressure to work, raise kids and take care of their spouse at the same time. And by take care of, I mean, do the housework for, do the cooking for all that stuff. That's why it's called the second shift. And that's why women are mostly the ones still doing it, even in this enlightened age. <clears throat> but yeah, no. Feminism has outgrown the notion that women must be more like men to deserve having rights. 
or to be treated like a serious person. The most likely to ignore the power and impact women have on the world and say it's not good enough. The most likely to reduce mothers down to just walking wombs. And it is so... No, that would be conservatives, at least in the United States. I can't speak for British conservatives, but uh, yeah, here we have a problem with conservatives viewing women as vessels. Incredibly ironic. That's why I titled this video what I did. It may sound extreme, but I was careful and deliberate with my word choice, and I meant what I said. Desecrate. To take something sacred and powerful and spit on it because you're too stupid or too angry to see its value. <sighs> Can we talk now, please? Can we talk about this disdain towards femininity? And, and please can we discuss it honestly? I know I've mentioned it before, but I have I've tended to stray away from um, getting too spicy on the topic for fear of pushing people's buttons. But now I think, I think it may be time to talk about male feminists. Oh, good. We don't. Are you a man of good character where women are concerned? Have you ever met a man of good character where women are concerned? Talk about being in a minefield, Rob. I've really gone and done it now. Okay, firstly, I would like to make, um, this is full of disclaimers at the minute, isn't it? I would like to make, though, the huge disclaimer that I have met many lovely men who would say that they are feminists, so this is by no means a blanket rule. It's really not. Don't be upset, male feminists. <laughs> or maybe you should be, I don't know, maybe I'm talking about you, um, but probably not. You're probably lovely. However, you know, however, I have also noticed, and noticed it enough to be a trend, that often the men who shout the loudest about being feminists don't really like women. Genuinely. I mean, it practically became a meme a few years ago, that, like how often it happened, that it seemed every publicly vocal male feminist was at some point revealed to have some rapey skeletons in his closet. Methinks the gentleman does protest too much. In my own experience, and I'm sorry, I'm getting anecdotal here, guys. What can I say? I'm a woman. Everything is based on how I feel about the world. I don't know how to read data. I actually can't read at all. It's amazing I've gotten so far as a book-related channel. People are going to take that seriously. Okay, I'm actually not great with data, but, but I, I'm not blaming that on the fact I'm female. I think that's just me. No one in my family is good at science things. <coughs> Except my brother. I'm really not helping the stereotypes here, am I, guys? In my own experience, I have, on many occasions, met or been acquainted with some very passionate male feminists, and it's remarkable how many of them seem to have a genuine anger for femininity. It's almost bitchy. Some of you girls out there, I know some of you girls out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly the kind of guy I'm talking about, okay? Like, a really spiteful dislike of feminine women. It's very odd. And Well, I did have an ex-boyfriend who seems to, I don't know, just like every time I expressed an enjoyment of something, he'd be like, why do girls like that? And I'm just like, What's wrong? Like I said, I like singing. He's like, oh, why do girls always like singing? Why don't they play instruments? And I'm like, well, uh, I just like singing. I feel I feel more powerful when I sing, you know. I and also I'm really kind of clumsy, so my my dexterity isn't really there for like stringed instruments. So, and I've never really had an interest in them. And so it's like, but why is liking something that women like bad? I mean, I really, I really think that's the question we should be asking ourselves. Why if, some, if, why if a woman likes it, or a teenage girl, why is that considered bad instead of something that just is? And now that I'm thinking about it, I do have a male friend who does identify as a feminist, whereas my ex-boyfriend never said he was a feminist. And I, I mean, I'm sure he believes that we should all be equal, but yeah. Anyway who also would jokingly ask me, ask me for nudes. And um, it was kind of amazing to me that he would call himself a feminist and not see the problem with that. But I do think that a lot of men don't really understand or know, and I'm sure some don't care, how women move through the world and why something that seems new to them is not new to us. And that is why we react the way we do to it. Because when you've experienced something the first time, okay, it's the first time, you know, you assume it's a mistake, whatever. 
The hundredth time, however, that then the temper has probably already been frayed and you're less likely to be nice about it. And people do expect women to be nice. I know I'm not the only woman to feel this. I've spoken to others who've noticed this. Girls, you know, you do know, you know what I'm talking about. They feel condescended to and judged by these guys. And also interestingly unsafe around them, some of them, um, like he could snap. Well, I never felt unsafe around him, either of those two men I mentioned, but yeah. I felt that. And maybe, maybe it's not all men who are angry at women, guys. Maybe, maybe it's just you. I also have some friends who have dated very outspoken male feminists and the stories. Not so great at the respecting of the women as they claim to be. Not all, not all, hashtag, hashtag. Hashtag not all. Very important to say not all, but enough to be a pattern. Which brings me to one of the other things that happened that I did also want to discuss in the video because I think it illustrates my point fairly well. I'm really putting my foot in it now, but I can't seem to help it. The whole Vorsch, JK Rowling fiasco so perfectly demonstrates what I'm talking about. Vorsch, sweetheart, what's the matter? Darling, I'm very concerned. This is troubling behavior. Vorsch, Vausch, I don't care. So as everybody probably already knows, he and JK Rowling got into a bit of a spat on Twitter, so much so that it made headlines. Um, and his responses, coming from a self-proclaimed women's rights advocate, were strange. First off, I just want to say- Is Vosh a women's, women's rights advocate? Because I'm trying hard to remember a time when he advocated for women's rights and I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Has Vorsch, Mr. I see no arguments against child pornography and it's possible for an adult and a child to have a sexual relationship that benefits the child. He's also made some questionable statements about wanking off to young girls. I also heard he has an obsession with horse cock and I don't even want to know more details about that one. That guy. How is he less controversial on the left than JK Rowling? Someone's really going to have to sit down and explain to me how the fuck he became a feminist icon because I uh, how are we measuring feminist icons because I have never considered Vosh a feminist icon nor have I ever considered him a women's rights advocate who makes these decisions I am confused this is also the same person who says believe all women and then went on to listen to a woman tearfully tell a story of her sexual assault and responded by saying bullshit that didn't happen because the woman in question happened to be right wing and anti the Me Too movement and Vorsch didn't like that her trauma didn't serve his purposes, I guess. So it's believe all women unless she has a different political belief. Let's actually believe women. Believe all women was co-opted by people who didn't believe in it to suggest that feminists and people who are against sexual assault want to throw out due process, but anyway, yeah, I really don't see how that makes him a feminist icon. I mean, it. I don't know him, but he sounds kind of like a shitty person. I know some people like to play devil's advocate, but there are really just some things that don't need to be put out there. Then the stupid slut is lying. Women's rights until the bitch says something I disagree with. Is that it? That seems to be it. This is what... Well, there are a lot of people who feel that way. I mean, when I say I don't believe so many male feminists when they say they support women. Women be quieter and start apologizing challenge, tweets the feminist. Yes, you dumb bitches, shut the fuck up about women's issues and let me, a man, decide what's best for you all. When Rowling responds by talking about her violent ex-husband, his response is as appropriately compassionate and understanding as you'd expect from such a noble defender of women's rights. I'm really not buying that he gives a single flying fuck about women, if I'm being honest. Who decided that Vorsch gets to come in on his white horse and tell us ladies to shut our fucking mouths in the name of feminism? Fantastic. Brilliant. I love how much sense everything makes nowadays. Fucking no. You don't get to come in and play the hero, telling us what women's rights are, especially when it seems like you really don't like women much at all. Step the fuck back. This is not your territory and you don't get to claim it on behalf of women. Talk about overstepping and pushing in where you've not been invited. You're not so much treading on our toes as trampling all over us. Foul. Just wind your neck in, mate. All right. Sorry for the rant. This is not the topic of this.
this video, but I did mention this because I just do I just do think that this is a pretty good demonstration of this obsession with feminism but intense dislike of femininity or women in general. It's bizarre. Give me an old school misogynist over this sh Well, I mean at least old school misogynists let you know who they are right away, but but I had a train of thought. But yeah, I'm I'm really trying to remember when he was advocating for women's rights, and I mean I'm sure he probably would say he believes in them, but I really don't consider this person an advocate for women's rights, and I mean people can post whatever they want on Twitter. Whether or not that's a good thing, it is not up for me to decide, but that is just the way it works, at least in the US. I do think he should not have said that because I am very tired of misogyny, whether it's ironic, just a joke, whatever, I am I am over it, I don't care. It is not cute, it is not funny, it just just don't don't say that shit shit any day seriously like hiding behind feminism to take out your dislike on women is some cowardly wormy behavior i love how if you're a self-proclaimed male feminist you can say or do literally any shit to a woman who's been cast out by the left and no one cares like that bloke a few years ago who kicked a pro-life woman in the face in the name of women's rights they are a special type of person and so many of them are creepy why, why are you why are you so creepy just don't be creepy not all not all not all but enough Every day I get more convinced about the theory that so many of them genuinely hate or resent women and just want an excuse to be able to do it and still be considered progressive at the same time. Like, really, my God. This is why I don't consider myself a feminist anymore, because under feminist law, it is okay to treat a woman really badly if she disagrees with the message. Um, where in feminist lore or law, I'm not quite sure which one she said, is, is that spoken or stated? Putting an ideology above the actual people it claims to support is not a movement that supports women. It's a fucking power grab. What else could it be? Wasn't feminism supposed to be about women's liberation? As in freedom, you know, the opposite of conforming to what you feel you're forced to do. Feminism now seems to be supporting women if you conform to what we believe and how we see women. Otherwise, you're not a woman anymore and Varys gets to tell you to shut your mouth about women's rights on Twitter. Get fucked. What well, I mean, if it wasn't for feminism, J.K. Rowling probably wouldn't have been on Twitter to begin with. But I, I really don't understand what this rant has to do with feminism. I mean, people can say they're whatever. That doesn't make them a good person. We see that all the time with Christians. Not all Christians, of course, but there are a lot of Christians out there who make Christianity look really, really bad. But that doesn't mean that Christianity as a whole is bad. Although, <laughs> What are you guys doing? You can all go and sit on the naughty step and have a big long think about what you've done. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. That's a lie, I'm fucking furious. Does it occur to you, Higgins, the girl has some feelings? Oh no, I don't think so. No feelings you need worry about. Well, have you, Eliza? I've talked quite a bit about femininity before on my channel, and so despite my channel not really being about that, I am sort of known for that, for, for appreciating femininity and disliking what's being done to it. And because of this, I get, I get women contacting me quite a lot, um, saying either how screwed over they feel, or just how nice it is to hear someone else voice their feelings on this topic. And the amount of women who say they've spent years feeling guilty about the fact they're naturally feminine, like it makes them weak or pathetic or unworthy, it's a lot of them. Mostly these are young women, often students, but the worst thing is when I get messages or comments from teenage girls saying the same thing, and that makes me angry enough to want to cry. Teenage girls get such a hard time from everyone, everyone's always accusing them of being annoying. Women are irrational, that's all there is to that. Their heads are full of cotton hay and rags. Which excuse you, sir. They're nothing but exasperating, irritating, vacillating, calculating, agitating, maddening, and infuriating hags. Do you have any idea what's going on with them? Their bodies are changing, and not just changing, but changing in ways to bring them intense physical pain. Hormones are flying all over the place. They're wondering if they're too fat or too skinny, or if they can ever be beautiful. They're likely hating their bodies. Suddenly grown men are looking at them, but they still feel like children, so they don't know what to do, which is horrifying. And everything is painful and terrifying and stressful. Of course they're annoying. Give them a break. What do you expect? Recently I started- Is it that teenage girls are annoying or is it that society has told us that they are? And what, what makes teen girls annoying anyway? 
started to feel very protective over teenage girls. I didn't really feel this way when I started my channel, and I think that was because at that point I was barely past being a teenage girl myself. But now it's different. I don't feel like one of their peers anymore, and I just look at the mess they're having to deal with and think, oh my god, I want to give you all a hug. I think this might also be because my littlest sister just turned 17, and I've always been very protective of her, and now I'm just seeing all teenage girls as little girls, because in my head my sister is still an adorable five-year-old, and probably always will be. I feel like a lot of the people pushing this stuff just have no idea of how it's screwing with young girls, probably because they don't spend a lot of time with young girls. And if you're boss, you probably shouldn't be allowed to. But I do spend time with them, and let me tell you guys, the kids are not okay. Off the top of my head, I can think of several self-hating teenage girls I know, though I would argue, from the evidence I can see, stems directly from them hating or being uncomfortable with their femininity, and it's leading to a lot of self-destructive behaviours. Really bad shit. I wonder if we're gonna get like a definition of what she considers femininity to be, because at this point I'm thinking that it's just being a woman. And that's a normal thing, I think, to some extent. So many teenage girls have such hang-ups about femininity because you do realise suddenly that it makes you vulnerable in a way you weren't before. And maybe men are looking at you now and you hate it and want it to stop, and I get yes. that, definitely been there, it's frightening. Um, so I think a certain degree of feeling really uncomfortable with femininity as a young girl is normal. But then the problem is young girls don't have any sort of guidance, so they don't necessarily know that it is normal and just end up feeling powerless or screwed up. For me, being a teenage girl felt like being adrift out at sea with no anchor. Wanting to be feminine because I knew that's how I was, but also being terrified of what that meant. And I, I, I've talked before about how shy I was as a teenager. Like, really fucking shy. Um, and I really do think a lot of it, not, not all, but a lot, stemmed from how I felt about my femininity. It felt safe to be invisible. I would really, really love what she defines as femininity because I mean like when I was a teenager oh so long ago I I was not comfortable with the way my body changed I hated my period I was not ready for it to arrive and every month I still eagerly await menopause yes I'm aware menopause will also suck but and I would I would dress in like really baggy clothing because I just did not I did not want that kind of attention but I never and I also went through my not like other girls phase where I, you know, oh, pink, I didn't like the color pink. You know, that was, that was girly, you know. I didn't like to hang out with girls because, you know, I wasn't like them. I didn't like shopping or other girly activities because, you know, I wasn't like other girls. And I mean, like my mother was and is like very uh, traditionally feminine. She loves makeup, shopping, dressing up, things like that. Which is kind of funny because she lives in the middle of nowhere. So there's not really many occasions to get dressed up and go out. So I definitely didn't get that from her. Maybe, I mean, I'm from a rural area. So it's not as though we had like billboards or anything telling me, oh no, being a girl is wrong. So, I mean, I did eventually grow out of it. Although it's kind of funny because it's like, if you are feminine as a woman you will be dinged for you know that and if you're not feminine enough as a woman you'll be dinged for that so really there is no winning and we should just be whatever we're most comfortable with <sighs> up until honestly probably my last year of university so only really a couple of years ago my favorite thing to wear were my dad's old shirts because then i could hide well that and fancy dress i've always loved dressing up costumes are the best but on the daily not that I never wore nice things, I did, and, and I sort of enjoyed it and wanted to be attractive, but I also never... I think that's pretty normal. I mean, like, I also wanted to be attractive, but not enough, I guess. I don't know. I was first told I was sexy when I was 12, which really kind of freaked me out, so, you know... I mean, maybe if we stopped looking at women as prey, teenage girls wouldn't feel this pressure to grow up so quickly and it wouldn't freak them out. I felt comfortable because I was not entirely comfortable with the fact that I was female. I did not like it. It felt scary. More than scary, actually. It's a... Well, I... I never wanted to be a boy. I always thought it wasn't fair that boys had to wear such boring clothes and they had to like live by such strict rules like not being able to cry, not being able to paint their nails. 
not being able to do ballet. Of course, now I know as an adult that that is ridiculous and boys can do that just as much as girls can. But I, I guess I had a fairly gendered upbringing. It's a feeling I can't describe, almost a slightly sickening feeling of disgust. I wanted to crawl out of my own skin and be free of it. Because there must be something fundamentally wrong with me. That's how it felt. Like there'd been a mistake somewhere between childhood and that point, and suddenly my body didn't feel like mine anymore. Listen. Okay, so I hear this a fair bit online of men saying young women just get handed all of this social power without having to do anything or prove yourself, and um, that men will just be interested in you anyway. And I know, I know a few of them can be a bit resentful about that. Which I get, it's understandable, but they're only seeing one side of it, especially for young girls. Who said it was a good thing to just have all that kind of thrust upon you? From the perspective of a teenage girl, it doesn't really feel like you have all this power. It doesn't feel like it's all just plain sailing. Sometimes it can, sure, of course, but a lot of the time it's just confusing. It's like if out of nowhere you were suddenly handed a really sharp and dangerous sword you didn't ask for, can't get rid of, and don't know how to use. Is that power? It can be, but just as easily you could end up hurting yourself or others because you've got no idea what to do with it and it might take you a long time to figure out how to wield it properly and maybe it could make you a target as much as it could make you powerful. Kind of like a baby deer wobbling around and unable to walk yet. It can feel a little bit like being thrown into the lion's den. And I know many teenage girls relate to this. I don't think it's too strong to say that a lot of girls find it quite traumatic, the sudden transition from child to object of desire. And I don't think the excessive shitting on femininity in culture right now is helping. I'm well, I had my sudden shift from childhood to adulthood in like the mid nineties, which was a lot of girl power stuff, which wasn't really about girl power. It's mostly like capitalist feminism, but hmm. So the lesson here is that society is bad. <laughs> we should never listen to it. But I, I do, I obviously I know from the things I've read and the channels I've looked at that there is this notion that women are valuable from the day they're born because they are able to give birth and then as they age, they lose that ability and with it goes their privilege, ability, whatever, desirability. And that is actually not the way it, well for one, when you're born, you literally can't give birth because you're a baby, you haven't gone through that process yet and really it's not safe to have kids when you're a teenager, it's safer in your 20s, but younger is not always better, but anyway. <sighs> But that's not the way it feels when you're 12 and you suddenly have these grown men looking at you. It does not feel like a privilege. It feels more like a threat. And I mean, thankfully, back then, I didn't know why they were looking at me. I just knew they were looking at me and that made me incredibly awkward and uncomfortable. If I knew then what I know now, I, I really would not have ever wanted to leave my house. I really don't. It certainly didn't help me. Because if you're never hearing the positives in femininity, if you're never seeing how it has its own type of value and power, and positive power, then it, it is quite difficult to become comfortable with it. Maybe I'd have gotten there a lot sooner if I'd felt like I'd had any kind of genuine guidance on people being honest about what it means to be a woman. I think this is what it is. I've but wouldn't what it means to be a woman differ from woman to woman? Because I mean, we all we all have different experiences. We all have, in my opinion, like our innate personalities that are shaped from our experiences as we grow up. So I just kind of think that like every man has to figure out manhood. Every woman has to figure out womanhood. It's not like a simple little box that you can put people in based on their sex. That's just me though. As a teenage girl, you suddenly feel very vulnerable. If you feel vulnerable, what you want then is to feel powerful so you can protect yourself. And if you are never hearing how there is strength in femininity, if the only representations of strength you see are masculine ideals, then either you might develop... Um, okay, so as someone who watched and was a big fan of Xena, <laughs> so Xena did a lot of fighting, you know, being the warrior princess and all. Although I must say that Gabrielle was my favorite, but like, why, why is that 
masculine. I mean, yes, men tend to be stronger than women, but if you see a woman fighting in a TV show, why is that making a female character masculine? Why can't it just be something that she does and is able to do and do it well? I mean, why is that is it disrespecting, destroying, desecrating femininity? I don't, I don't understand. A victimhood mentality and always feel like prey. I had a little of that for a while. It's not healthy to be in that place. Really not good. Or you, you, might, you might even use the shield of victimhood as a way to protect yourself. I've seen that happen. Or maybe you're going to push femininity away so that you can become powerful, to make yourself safe, to protect yourself from how vulnerable you are. And if you can't achieve those masculine ideals of strength because it does not come naturally to you, then you'll feel even more afraid and powerless and unsafe and probably hate yourself for being weak and actually end up totally disempowered and all in the name of feminism. I think that might be the situation. So growing up in the country, we had a lot of trees around and I did fashion myself a little staff like Gabrielle's. But I was, I mean, obviously there was no like warlords coming to my home, but uh, I never really felt that I would be able to best anyone in a fight, even another woman. I got briefly into a shoving match in seventh grade and I walked away because I knew I would not win, but that didn't make me feel like a lesser woman or anything like that. It's just not... I'm not a fighter, that's not who I am. And I don't think, I mean, personally I don't think anybody should be fighting. It is 2022, we should be past that by now. But obviously we are not, but we should be. But yeah, I don't understand this notion that physically fighting means you're not feminine. I mean, mother, <laughs> speaking of, But yeah, I mean, people can be multifaceted. Just because a woman is a woman doesn't mean that everything she does is going to be a stereotypical feminine thing. And also people change throughout time. What you do at 20 might not be what you do at 30 or 40. And of course, experiences that you have when you're 20 will shape who you are when you're 40. So who's not to say that Galadriel didn't become like an Amazon warrior babe at 20. And then in her wiser years, she was like, oh, you know what? I don't think violence is the answer. I think we have better ways of doing things. What? Hmm happening there because how many girls are genuinely going to find a warrior chick inspiring and empowering let's be let's be sensible about this guys come on some will of course some will and they they deserve their heroes too but it's a small percentage most of them will just feel shit about themselves because they're not out hacking people to pieces with their insane fighting skills and well no because that would be murder and that's illegal all these people writing these annoying articles about how the new Galadriel is the feminist icon we've all been waiting for. I'm sorry, piss off. How many of you yourselves are incredibly skilled fighters? Or are you just sitting in front of your laptop with a glass of wine saying, Yas Queen so inspiring, but not actually being inspired? I think it's the latter. It's such surface level easy fucking praise, man. With no depth of thought or an original idea among them. God's sake, it's honestly so patronizing. I'm insulted by corporations putting out images of women striking badass poses with explosions happening behind them and waiting for us to all go crazy over them. So I don't see anything saying that Galadriel is the feminist icon that we've been waiting for, but I do see a video by someone titled Amazon changes Galadriel into angry feminist in woke rings. So, all right. them like ah oh my god yes feminism hashtag queen i'm sorry ladies when as women did we collectively become eight-year-old boys easily distracted by a sword and some cool explosions and expected to overlook everything else when did that happen please tell me we're not that easy to con with such shitty thoughtless marketing tricks tell me it's not so easy for us to have an essential aspect of ourselves eroded away use your so womanhood is when no sword gotcha Brains, they are insulting us. What enrages me is that this is all done in the name of female empowerment, and I'm just I'm just not seeing the evidence of that, I'm afraid. I see a lot of self-hatred, not much empowerment, and the guilt. Jesus Christ, the guilt. Why are so many and expected to overlook everything else? When did that happen? Please tell
tell me we're not that easy to con with such shitty, thoughtless marketing tricks. Tell me it's not so easy for us to have an essential aspect of ourselves eroded away. Use your brains, they are insulting us. What enrages me is that this is all done in the name of female empowerment and I'm just, I'm just not. Did they say they were trying to do female empowerment? Or is this just like, she's going off the changes they brought and saying that they're doing female empowerment? Not seeing the evidence of that, I'm afraid. I see a lot of self-hatred. What? Where? Not much empowerment. And the guilt. Jesus Christ, the guilt. Why are so many women feeling guilty? That's the main thing I hear from women is how guilty they feel because either they're too feminine and they feel like they should be more of a modern woman or they feel guilty because they're not feminine enough and they feel like they're failing as a woman. A lot well, I mean, I don't feel guilty. But sometimes I feel bad because like I know my mother wants me to do and act and be a certain way and I just really have no interest in doing so. Although I do want to please my parents, but Sometimes it's just not that easy, but I don't feel guilty for not like portraying womanhood the way some people think it should be done. A lot of my friends feel that way too, and I know I've bloody felt that, and I'm not sure I know what the answer is. Oh, good. There's a woman in your life, and your serenity is through. Here's the problem. I think we have. She'll redecorate your home from the cellar to the dome, then go on to the enthralling fun of overhauling you. I think a lot of people don't actually know what femininity is because we actually don't talk about it. I think partly we're not really allowed to talk about it. That's the other thing. I've, considering the stuff that I look at, I find it kind of funny that she says this because I see a lot of people talking about femininity in certain things that I see. But also I think a lot of people just don't talk about it because they don't really consider it, they're, they're selling themselves, not like femininity. Like if you look at influencers on Instagram, it's their lifestyle, not them being a woman that they're selling. It's just the stuff that they do and the fact that they're a woman is just kind of incidental. But we don't really discuss it much. We talk about masculinity all the time. We do. Everyone's always talking about masculinity, whether because they hate it and they think it's toxic or because they love it and they think it's healthy. And I'm not saying that masculinity shouldn't be talked about. It's good that it's talked about or that it doesn't get shit on a lot because it does. Um, but people do talk about it. And we all seem to have a pretty good idea of what people mean when they talk about masculinity, whether you love it or you hate it. Strong, decisive, protective, generous, aggressive. I don't know, whatever words you want to give it. People kind of no. Femininity just seems to be kind of dismissed and disregarded, sneered at. For is she saying that we don't have like an idea of what femininity is because people don't talk about it? Because I mean like, I could roll off some traits that I would consider traditionally feminine. Botten about and deemed unimportant, not even worth a conversation. I don't know, I feel like most people, if you ask them what femininity is, would be like, oh, soft or something, gentle, which yeah, kind of true, but I don't know, I don't know. Or like nails, hair. I, I, I just feel like that would probably be the answers you'd get. It's well, I'm looking very much forward to her defining what femininity is for us because I am very curious. Credibly ironic that we have this <laughs> feminist movement which is supposed to be all about women and literally all they do is sit around and bitch about men. Could you be incorrect? Be any more of a stereotype? I mean, really, girls, sort it out. Are there loads of people talking about femininity? Have I just missed this? Because the only people I've ever really come across talking about it are extremely conservative Christian types. Girl Defined. Which is fine, and to each their own, but you know, if that works for you, go- I feel like Girl Defined's reach is a lot farther than I thought it was, although they do have over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, so maybe I shouldn't be too surprised that she knows about them. For it, have my blessing. But those aren't the kind of conversations that work for me, and nor do I find there to be much truth in it beyond a shallow discussion of how to be ladylike. Right off the bat, I fail at that with my bad language and choice of skirt. So no more femininity for me. I think the, can we call it the right wing answer to the question of femininity also seems to be either a little narrow or shallow. It's too sanitized almost. Disconnected actually from the self. I don't know if that makes sense. Suppressed, is that the word I'm looking for? That might be the word I'm looking for. 
I'm a feminist after all. I mean it though. It, it sometimes comes across as a little too controlled or restricted or emphasising the shallower aspects of femininity. And actually, to be honest, mostly they just talk about masculinity too, which I get because masculinity is really trampled on. But my point still stands. That's a generalisation, I'm sorry. And I'm sure there are people who are going into more depth than that, but I, I haven't really seen it. I do mainly just see the giving women the vote was a mistake types. Um, and if the only people talking about femininity are people who just in all seriousness are not going to appeal to most modern women, then what? Because and I, I understand what the conservatives are saying and where this attitude has come from. But guys, come on, be serious. Not every woman will be happy just being in the home. Some of you pretend you don't know that, but it is true. And you're never gonna get everyone to go back to that. Unless you're a totalitarian asshole. And I think we've all had more than enough of that sort of behavior over the past couple of years. Do we? Clearly she is not an American, but we already knew that. Thanks to flatten the curve, no jab, no job, obey Fauci. So aside from the few people who are talking- But she did mention Fauci, which is weird because she's British about femininity the politically correct mm. mainstream attitude now seems to be that women are basically just like men but smaller and i'm sorry i don't think we are i'm insulted by that assessment i'm not a man where did she get that from because my i have not come across that i have not seen anything that gave me that impression i wonder if she listed like sources in her description i'm not a little man or a man with admittedly small breasts. I'm not a man, nor am I like a man, nor do I want to be. I like being female. There are many great things about it. I think women actually have a lot more value than just to be weaker men, which is what everyone seems to be telling us to be. I think we've actually got something unique and important to offer the world that men do not have. I'm sorry, men, I love you, but there are some things you just cannot do or that you do very badly, like being tactful. My dad, this is totally irrelevant, um, my mum got me this top the other day for my birthday and my dad looked at it, then he looks at me and he says, you'll never fit into that. And he didn't even realise he'd said anything wrong. Me and my mum just stared at him and he's all confused for some reason, like, what, what, the top, the top is tiny, I'm just stating a fact, it's not a judgement, it's just a fact, what's the problem? Do you think you could have phrased it better, maybe? Have a, have a longer think about what you're going to say next time. He's got three daughters, you'd think he'd know this by now. You've got to be patient with men, they're a bit clueless sometimes. I'm sorry boys, but you are. And I did fit into it, so he was wrong, but I appreciated the astonished disbelief. Anyway, I was speaking of femininity. I feel- This kind of reminds me of what I was saying earlier about the 90s sitcoms writing fathers as though they were clueless. I'm just saying I see a similarity between that and what she just said here, but uh, yeah. I feel like we're not allowed to talk about it. I, I do, or at least in any meaningful way. I've got another, let's call it a more hippie, woo-woo, spiritual definition of femininity, which we'll leave aside. For the purposes of this video, we'll just go for a fairly regular explanation. The femininity is the ability to create and nurture life. I don't think we can have an honest conversation about femininity without talking about at least the potential for motherhood. I'm sorry. That's not to say that I think you have to experience motherhood in order to be feminine. I'm truly not saying that. I promise. I promise I'm not saying that. I know, I know lots of women, even some older women, who don't have children who are very feminine. So I'm not saying that. But this is why femininity exists in the first place. To be able to grow something and care for it until it becomes beautiful. This expresses itself in a multitude of ways, and not just women can do it, unless of course you're talking about childbirth. Um, but apart from that, I'm not saying femininity is exclusively a female thing, though I do think there's a heavy correlation. But it... <laughs> so does she believe in her disclaimers, or is she disclaiming to try and stave off negative comments? Because, yeah, there are some people who will disagree that being feminine is growing and nurturing something since that also obviously not all women can do that and not all women have an interest in doing that. So it's a rather narrow definition of femininity. This brings me to my next point. I think motherhood has been so degraded nowadays too, which goes hand in hand with this dismissal of femininity. Why do they do everything their mothers do? Why don't they grow up? 
Well, like their father instead. So I'm going to read this definition of desecration again before I say this next bit so you understand why I chose the wording I did. Desecration is the act of depriving something of its sacred character or the disrespectful, contemptuous or destructive treatment of that which is held to be sacred. So I'm, I'm sure she's probably not saying this, but I also don't like this notion that like womanhood is sacred. So I remember a while ago, I think it was a few months maybe, there was this article, and I don't know if I can find it, I tried to find it before I did this video, I couldn't remember what it was called or who <laughs> written it, I couldn't dig it up, but I remember this at the time when it happened, and the furore surrounding it on Twitter. It was an article, she was written by a left-wing woman, so she herself was self-described, you know, passionate feminist, but the article was just about her experience of being a new mother. So from what I remember of it, she described things like how her time became marked by the rhythms of her baby, how much she loved her newborn, the smell of her baby's skin, listening to her baby breathe, and just how in love she was and how it was the most fulfilling thing in her life thus far. How everything she was became about that baby. It was moving and beautiful and precious, and the feminists hated it. They hated it. They tore that article apart. Like, how fucking bitter do you have to be to read something like that? Something describing possibly the most sacred thing on the planet, like the love of a mother for her newborn, and not only not feel your heart grow ten times bigger, but actually actively want to destroy it and everything it stands for because... Well, for one, disagreeing with an article someone wrote doesn't mean you're trying to destroy something, but... I looked up passionate feminist new mother and I got 10 things feminist moms do differently than any other parents. Like a mother, a feminist journey through the sigh. 12 things my feminist mom taught me about life, feminism and motherhood and American reading. Third wave feminism and the politics of motherhood. So yeah, I wonder, I'm just gonna see real quick. Okay. I was hoping maybe she had some sources so I could like look at what she's talked about in this video, but no worries, we'll continue. Because somehow it's harming the cause. This is, this is why I'm talking about desecration. This is why I- So I know that there are some women out there who think that if a woman does something stereotypically considered feminine, they're setting back the cause or whatever, and that is nonsense. One person cannot change the cause and like the whole point is for women to behave as people. That means that some women will want to do traditionally feminine things and some will not and either one is okay. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I guess I'm still recovering from a cold. <laughs> I mean, what, what other word could you use to describe that? What is it if not that? God, I, I don't know, honestly, it's like spitting on God or something. Interesting interesting um but like whenever you put something out there in public and the more people that see it the more likely you're gonna have people that disagree with you and it's really either whichever side you're on it's pointless to try and convince people that you're right so i really just like wouldn't worry about it too much if people hate what you stand for that's on them Maybe they'll come around, maybe they won't, but yeah. It's just words on the internet. And that doesn't mean I think all women have to be mothers. Not all women want to be, and that's fine too. That's fine too. Thank you. I'm not arguing for us to go back to the 50s. I'm not saying women have to stay at home and not work. If they do want to do that, also fine. Um, much as I myself want to be a mother, I also know that I know that I could never give up on the work I do, particularly the creative stuff. Um, and I just know this about myself, so don't tell me in the comments again that I need to find myself a good man and get off the internet to become a good little housewife. Um, don't do it! I would go crazy if I wasn't also working on a project, and I, I do know myself well enough to know this. Ah, ah, don't! I know you mean well, but you haven't tried my cooking. I forget things and they burn. Some of you are very concerned with, as I believe one of you phrased it, my jeans going to waste. I'm only 25. Stop trying to stress me out. 
I still have time. I don't think I'm past it yet. We can relax. My grandmother disagrees. Apparently I'm too old and no one will have me now. Um, thank you for the birthday wishes, Abuela. It, it, it made me feel really emotionally stable. <laughs> 25 and still not married. <sighs> As I was saying, I was saying, I'm not saying that all women have to behave in the same way and stay in the kitchen. What I am saying though, is I think the degradation, degra degra degradation, why can I not say, I cannot say the word. Degregation? Degregation. Degregation. De de degradation. Degradation. Oh my God, I can't say it. I can't say it. I can't say it. I think the degradation, degradation of motherhood is pretty disgusting. <laughs> um, and I think this extends out to feminine traits in general. One thing I said a few years ago now, actually, in this video, which I haven't watched back because my old videos are... I don't like how I am in my old videos. I'm very stiff and defensive, but I was only I was only a timid wee bear then, okay? Um, anyway, in that video, I said that I think vulnerability is a strength and also that I think it is an inherently feminine quality. Of course, then there are a load of comments asking how I, how, how can I possibly think that vulnerability was anything other than weak? Um, you're wrong. Vulnerability is not the same as weakness at all. I wish I had time to talk about this properly, but this video is already weak. I do agree that being vulnerable is not a sign of weakness. Too long. So I will try and give a very brief explanation of why I think this is, because I don't think I can make this video and not at least mention it, though I will not do it justice. Firstly, it requires immense courage to be vulnerable because it is terrifying. And if you don't know that, then maybe you've never been brave enough to do it. <laughs> don't tell me vulnerability doesn't require courage. And women are naturally more vulnerable than men as well, for obvious reasons. There are also times I don't think it's natural that women are more vulnerable than men. I think it's just that we've been told that women are more vulnerable than men and we tend to emulate what we've been told. I mean, like the first time I saw a man cry, my mind was, my mind was blown because, I mean, so far as I was aware, men didn't even have tear ducts. Times when women have to willingly make themselves vulnerable in a way that men never have to do. Pregnancy will be one of those times, but not the only time. I think vulnerability I think it's the same as trust, maybe, or faith, even hope. I don't know. Vulnerability, it can be incredibly powerful, though, and I, I truly mean that. It doesn't just require courage to do. It can also be powerful in and of itself. Again, I wish I could go into detailed examples, but I will say that I've seen it completely take the wind out of someone's sails before in a way approaching them combatively may not have done. Um, and you have to be brave to do that in the first place because you're accepting you might get hurt and just having faith that you won't be. It's opening yourself. Vulnerability can be disarming. You can disarm someone with vulnerability. I think it can present itself in different ways, but I don't think you can nurture something without being vulnerable because nurturing requires openness, which requires vulnerability, which requires courage. It's not weakness because weakness is cowardice. Weakness is just weak and it's useless, okay? Vulnerability is not useless, it's necessary. That makes it not weak. The ability to nurture something is very valuable. There would be no life without it, so how could it be weak, okay? Growing something requires subtlety and intuition. You can't just go hammering at it. That would be silly, which is why femininity is better suited to those purposes, I think. Um, it actually, it makes you think of the sound of music, which is a bit of a silly example, but I think it illustrates the point so well, and very, like, clearly. The captain tries to raise his kids like they're in the military, like, in the most masculine way possible. Um, and they're all lost and suffering. And then Maria comes in like a breath of fresh air and just feels her way through the process. Gentle tweaks here and there. She knows exactly what they need and all the children bloom under her watch because joy and beauty is allowed to thrive. Like gardening. For a really beautiful garden, you've got to nurture things, protect them from pests and weeds, but let them grow as they were meant to be with a bit of guidance here and there, sure. But if you try and rigidly control it, you'll destroy everything beautiful. Trust the process, allow it to happen. Life knows what it's doing. Let things breathe. My mum has raised four children and she said to me recently um, that you can't stick to an inflexible plan because each child is so different because they're different people, who knew? Um, and what works for one will not work for another. So you have to sense how to do it and just and not try and hammer them into a specific box because then you've taken this little child and crushed them. The ability to create and nurture Life is so important because there would be no life without it. And it doesn't just have to be in regards to children, okay? 
I see women do this all the time in all areas of life and it's an immensely powerful thing. I've seen women run businesses like this and make them very successful, by the way. So I'm not saying these are only skills for raising children or that women, that's where a woman's place should be because she's nat naturally nurturing so she should naturally be in the home and nowhere else because I know people do make that argument. I'm not making that argument. I'm saying, yes, women have a lot of these qualities and they are important for raising children, but they are also can be utilised in many other areas and they're important for lots of things. So I'm not saying that women have to stay at home. So as I was scripting this video, um, I saw someone recently commented on this video and it just tied in quite nicely to the topic. So the comment was something along the lines of, oh, so you're saying the only thing women are good at is to make things beautiful. Um, which firstly, I don't think anybody was saying that. And secondly, only? This is what I mean about femininity being dismissed and seen as shallow. Just creating beauty. Life. That's what you mean, isn't it? Isn't, isn't beauty life and isn't life beautiful? Am I wrong? I, I can't unlink them from each other in my mind. It's, it's impossible. They are forever entangled. Children are beautiful. Women grow those. I'm going to use this quote again, and this will be like the fourth time I've quoted this in a video. It's, I'm always quoting this. I, I, I do like, it's one of my favourite quotes and it just, it just seems to always just be relevant to everything. Um, so I quote this a lot, but th this quote just still sums it up perfectly. From the Dead Poets Society, which again, was one of my favourite films. So, okay. Medicine, law, business, engineering. These are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love. These are what we stay alive for. Isn't beauty just life celebrating itself? Isn't, isn't that what makes up for all the shit? Like, why else are we here? If all the beauty on the planet was irreversibly destroyed, I would probably check out tomorrow. What would be the point? What's the point? If not, if not that. Well, I see what she's saying there, but I also think that a lot of her commenters are probably a bit more pragmatic, and that was where that one person was coming from. Although I have not watched that video of hers that a person commented on so I can't really know for sure but yeah some people are just more not grounded in reality but I don't know less romantic very you know narrow focused <laughs> In six months, in three, if she has a good ear and a quick tongue, I'll take her anywhere and I'll pass her off as anything. I'll make a queen of that barbarous wretch. I do understand where the desire to change every feminine character into a more masculine one comes from. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the classic Disney princesses were, in all honesty, just a little bit pathetic. Pocahontas is obviously excluded from that category because she is beautiful and ferocious and amazing, but your Snow White and your Sleeping Beauty in particular are maybe not examples that you would want to emulate. <laughs> the overdramatic sobbing, the naivety that borders on stupidity, the powerlessness, the lack of them taking charge of anything in their lives, the just waiting around for a prince to come and rescue them, which is not a clever thing to do. They lived in an almost constant state of victimhood. And I understand the frustrations with looking at them and thinking, well, if that's what femininity is, I don't want to be that. That's very annoying. Let's get rid of it. No more femininity for anybody. It's cancelled. Now we've come full circle and arrived back at Galadriel. On the surface, she seems to have a lot in common with a Disney princess. She's beautiful, feminine, soft, royal, elegant, finely dressed and gentle. I can see why characters like her and other feminine characters are being erased or rewritten along with the weeping princesses, but let's not lump them in together. That would be very short-sighted and foolish. I believe there's a saying that's appropriate here, something about babies and bathwater. Don't confuse the queens with the princesses. Don't throw the women out with the girls. Galadriel is just about the furthest thing from powerless or a victim that I can think of. What they've done to her, it's... Right. It's almost like... So it's an Amazon thing. What they've done to her, it's almost like if you looked back at Queen Elizabeth I and thought, yeah. So I know she was an immensely powerful, clever and tough monarch who ruled alone for years and whose influence extends out to this day. But isn't it a shame she never picked up a sword and hacked people to death on the battlefield? Let's rewrite it so she does. That would make her truly inspiring. 
You fools. That's very silly. What is this heralding of masculine ideals of strength above all others? No disrespect to soldiers, truly. But you're not seriously going to tell me that a nameless soldier in her army had more power than fucking Elizabeth I just because he could throw a punch better. I say that. I bet old Lizzie could have decked someone if she wanted to. It's always the redheads. My point, though, is that not literally just what they've done with Galadriel? Like, it's that ridiculous and stupid. Well, I mean, the series hasn't even been released yet, so we don't really know. But this... So please let me know in the chat or in the comments. I don't even know if anyone's actually watching this because I'm watching the, the screen. Um, if you think that nowadays there's a, less of a representation of traditionally feminine women on screen. Stupid. Again, I may be proved wrong. Maybe it's all wrong and Amazon not done this. But I doubt it, because it is just one example in a much larger trend, and I have little faith left. I have spoken several times of my anger and irritation at femininity be not being seen as good enough, but this one with Galadriel is interesting, because she's not just any female character. There's something spiritual about her, which is why this particular change seems more insulting than others in the past. She really does represent something divine. She's not a mortal woman. She's beyond that, something else, out of reach. Something pure and eternal, goddess-like. How might you desecrate a character like that? Covering her in mud and blood would be a good start. Then I suppose you could tear away everything that makes her powerful, rip away her divinity and make her mundane, taint something that was pure. Well, if there is a trope that needs to die, it's the idea that women must be pure. I've been rereading The Lord of the Rings recently, because I am an intellectual, and not long ago, I read the part where we meet Galadriel for the first time. I'm... okay. I have my copy here. It's very battered, because I've had this since I was like eight years old or something, so I'm not nice to my books. That recently I came off today, I've already had to stick it back on once already. Much loved though. So, reading the part where we meet Galadriel for the first time, she has the most authority of all the characters in that scene. A quiet but commanding presence, and there's nothing meek about her. The first time we meet her, she calls out her husband for misspeaking about something, um, and everyone listens to her because she is powerful and wise, and everybody always listens to her. Wouldn't it be kind of ironic if everybody listened to her because they were actually scared of her because they saw her in battle? I'm just saying. A huge part of her power is the fact <coughs> people adore her and respect her. Everything about her, in fact, commands respect and adoration. You can have no other reaction towards her. She can just look at someone and they crumble. The reason Galadriel doesn't have a sword is because she doesn't need one, you idiots. She, if she could just look at someone and make them fold, then why the hell would she need to be able to fight? How is she not so much more powerful than that? So she's like a god then? I'll read the scene where Gimli, who up until that point did not much like the elves, although I think him and Legolas were starting to be buddies, but, um, you know, still had his issues. This is where he meets Galadriel. She looked upon Gimli, who sat glowering and sad, and she smiled. And the dwarf, hearing the names given in his own ancient tongue, looked up and met her eyes, and it seemed to him that he looked suddenly into the heart of an enemy and saw there love and understanding. Wanda came into his face, and then he smiled in answer. He rose clumsily and bowed in dwarf fashion, saying, Yet more fair is the living land of Lorien, and the Lady Galadriel is above all the jewels that lie beneath the earth. And yes, from that point, Gimli does get a little bit obsessed, asking for strands of her hair. Um, <laughs> but we'll overlook that. No, but, okay, my point, my point is, though, like, everyone has that reaction to her. Um, well, whoops. Sounds to me more like she has that effect on people, dwarves, whatever, because she's a supernatural being and not because she's some symbol of sacred womanhood. But okay. Maybe not quite as extreme. But my, no, my point is it's not her beauty. It's really not. It's not her beauty, or at least not solely, that is why she has this quality that makes people adore her. It's something far deeper than that, said love and understanding. Something far deeper than that, something very feminine, something queenly and understanding, something accepting about her. 
So I was thinking if I could come up with any real life examples of women like this, because it's all very well to talk about Galadriel and the power of femininity when you're talking about a magical elf. Um, so okay, are there any real women then that have that kind of authority and power? Like, what are you talking about? So obviously they won't be completely like Galadriel because as we've established, she's not a mortal woman and she yeah. is magic. Um, but I was wondering if I could think of someone real who had this power or like, a comparable power version of it this queenly quality that makes people adore and respect her and the person who immediately sprang to mind without me having to think very hard at all was audrey hepburn you know when you just walked in here i was sure you'd been sent by the family to deal with me audrey carried that and there's no other word for it queenly aura that totally commanded respect and it came across in all the roles that she played she was and still is adored and by men and women alike of course she's an incredibly beautiful woman but that's not what gave her this quality otherwise she would have lost it as she aged and she never did and i have met some older women who carry this quality by the way it's quite striking like you... when you meet a woman like that um, it's, it is mostly older women who have it, rather than younger ones, so this quality, it's not about sexuality. It also makes Audrey rare, as she had this quality when she was young. Um, it's this warm, feminine authority, a gentleness, but also this aura that you're standing in the presence of a queen, and you'd better bloody stand up straight and respect her. 15,000 kronen. No. 25,000 kronen. No. 25,000 dollars. No. How did dollars get into this? There's nothing cold or snobbish about it, though. It's not that at all. Audrey Hepburn was elegant and dignified, but never cold. She had this beautiful childlike quality to her, too. This enthusiastic joy and a radiant smile that made her so loved. Well, hello. How are you? Oh, no, I'm just fine, thank you. And how are you? This is what I mean. You can't help but adore her. I adore her. And it's not about sex, because I don't want to have sex with Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> Gorgeous as she is. She built her career on this quality. She did. Because much as I love Audrey, and I do, she she's not a natural actress. Don't get me wrong, she can play classy, elegant lady fine enough, which is basically just herself. In fact, she can play that very well. But if she ever had a role that involved, you know, acting, she wasn't fabulous. As shown by her performance as Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady, when she has to play a working class girl, and it's not, it's not very convincing. Hey, I've had enough of this, I'm going, I am. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you ought. Um, very hammed up, which is only made more painfully obvious because she was acting opposite Rex Harrison, who is a brilliantly natural performer. Thank you. So he just, like, really showed up her acting. Yes, you squashed cabbage leaf. You disgrace to the noble architecture of these columns. You incarnate insult to the English language. It, it's, I love that movie. I could pass you off as uh, the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit painful sometimes to watch her in it. Oh, I'm a good girl, I am! And yet, and yet, her role in that film was justified, I think, entirely by the fact that when she walked into that ballroom and convinced all of the people there that she was not just a flower girl from London, but was in fact a mysterious foreign princess, we all fucking believed it too. I believed that she could have walked into that ballroom and immediately grabbed the attention of a prince, as she did, and that everyone would have been in awe of her. You could have had an actress far more talented than Audrey unable to pull that off. You could have had a more beautiful woman in that role who wouldn't have been able to pull that off. It's not about those things. She just has this quality. An effortless elegance, a grace, a dignity. That a character, another character in that very scene, in the ballroom scene, describes her in that scene as having, quote, such a far away look as if she's always lived in a garden. Which is not only lovely, but also somehow perfectly explains Audrey's quality without explaining it at all. So there we go, the closest I could get to a realistic Galadriel. And don't tell me that's not powerful. Audrey Hepburn built a career of being respected and adored, and she gained a huge amount of influence because of it. It's not powerless. It's not, it's not weak. It's not useless, okay? And it's not valueless. It's important. It brings something to people. It puts something into the world, okay? There's something in it.
she will beg you for advice. Your reply will be concise and she'll listen very nicely. Then go out and do precisely what she wants. Right, okay, everyone. Everyone be quiet now. Shush the rest of you. I am talking to young girls. And you are not allowed to laugh because this is very serious. And I don't care if you think this is silly. I'm talking to the little ones, okay? I'm not saying every woman has to be like Audrey Hepburn or Galadriel. That would be silly. There are many... Well, that's a good thing because I think that'd be a rather tall order. Many different ways to be feminine. Um, I'm just saying that those are examples of how powerful and authoritative femininity can be. You shouldn't feel weak or lesser because you feel you're naturally feminine and you do not have to become masculine in order to be valuable or worthy or strong. It's okay to be feminine. I promise you, it really is. There's something really valuable and important there that you have. Something specific to femininity and it is okay to measure yourself by that metric if you want to. So I don't think it's bad to want or have traditionally feminine or masculine traits, whether you're male or female. But I also don't think that if you are, say, female and you have masculine traits, that that makes you less feminine. Or if you're a man and you have some feminine qualities, that it makes you less of a man. Something that I really do not like is how we gender so many things that really don't need to be gendered. When I was a kid, my grandfather got me a little toy Jeep to drive around in and my mother was upset because it was blue and not a girl color. Did that really matter? No, it's just, we all have our different traits. We all nurture them, grew them, were born with them, what have you. And it doesn't make us lesser or better. Rather than constantly comparing yourself to all of the men around you and wondering why you're not measuring up and I also think that comparing yourself to the people around you is like an exercise in futility. I mean, if you see traits in someone that you admire, by all means, pursue those traits. Hopefully they will make you a better person, not a worse person. But uh, no one is going to be like you. So please don't feel pressured to be like everyone else because that is just, it's never going to happen which I know is a difficult message for, I think, teenagers in general, teenage girls and boys, because there's so much pressure to fit in and be one with the crowd and all that. And as someone who always wanted to fit in, but never could quite manage it, I think it's just better to like nurture yourself rather than trying to force yourself into a role that you might not fit. I mean, it's just really, it's not worth being uncomfortable in who you are to try and be who you think other people think you should be. Feeling unworthy or guilty or wrong because of that. If you don't fit into the masculine ideal of strength or success or power, that does not make you lesser, never lesser. It just makes you different. Listen, my darlings. Yes, you are my darlings. Teenage girls are my darlings, whether you want to be or not. My darlings. If you are feminine, that does not make you weak. If you can grow and sustain life and care for things, that is magic. It is valuable and important and you must treasure it like pearls. No laughing, this is very serious. This is how you will think of these things for me, okay? You must promise to think that you have strings of magic pearls like a princess and then you will not be sad or angry anymore. Except when you need to be angry. Sometimes it is good to be angry. Sometimes it is very good to be angry. Also, the teenage girls who don't feel particularly feminine. That is okay. You can be masculine if you want. You don't have to be. I like how it's either feminine or masculine. You can't be in between. You can't just be. You're either masculine or feminine. Feminine. You are still my darlings too. But I do like that she says sometimes it's good to be angry. I have issues with that where I downplay my emotions because I feel like maybe they're not justified. Can't imagine where I got that idea from. I, I love you all equally, except for my little sister, who I love the most. But that is just because she is the best person in the world, so I kind of have to. She'll never let me forget I said that. Shush, Piglet, you're still annoying, and I want my copy of His Dark Materials back. But there is something really strong and successful and powerful in femininity too. Okay, and scary, by the way, also. So remember that one. That's 
the other thing. Um, in a way that masculinity does not have, and it doesn't make you pathetic. Really doesn't. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen a mother defending her children? Yeah. Other things might still make you pathetic. Don't get me wrong, this is not a free pass to be pathetic. This isn't, isn't what this video is. No, no, no. Hey, hey. Mm -hmm. ah, none of that. Chin up, shoulders back, be brave ladies. You can cry, but then, you, then you've got to stand up straight and, you know, continue. It's okay to cry, but you still have to get on with it. That's the rule. Being feminine doesn't mean that you have to keep your head down and be meek and sweet and let people walk all over you. That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about femininity. This is what I mean. I say femininity and people's minds automatically jump to push over. How did femininity become equated to that? Do you think it's all chick flicks and fucking baking over here in femininity land? Or getting our nails done and talking about boys? Is that what people think I mean when I talk about femininity? Exactly what part of womanhood, which generally involves a lot of blood and pain even before you get to childbirth, exactly what part of that brings to mind weakness? Growing things is painful and requires sacrifice and strength as much as softness. You'll grow something weak if you're not strong, if you don't have some grit about you, okay? You can't grow a strong upright tree on earth that crumbles. So there we go. Have that messy pile of thoughts that I have. You are very welcome. <laughs> um, honestly, I feel like I only scratched the surface. I know this was really long, but I still, I still feel like I only really scratched the surface and didn't go into much depth with this video. It, I feel like a lot of it is quite raw and unformed. But I do also know a lot of other women feel the same. And, and just most of all, I do worry about teenage girls. I, like, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not fucking around with that, I mean it. I'm worried about them. I think things are pretty bad for them at the moment. I'll finish with just saying that it's okay to be gentle, ladies, but sharpen your teeth. You still need a bit of bite. You make out fine, your kind always does. Or claws, we were talking cats earlier, weren't we? Claws then. You can just keep your nails sharp, just in case you have to scratch someone's eyes out. In a classy way. Of course. Oh, I'm more determined than you think. I win, all right. How is Rob? We haven't checked on him in a while. How are you doing, Rob? Still okay? Yeah, yeah, not weirded out by the fact I've been personally addressing you throughout this video? Okay, good. I can't wait to find out if I've survived the minefield. How many of my nine lives are left? What is, uh, the victory of a cat on a hot tin roof? Will I land on my feet or fall flat on my face? Tune in next time to find out. Just stand on it, I guess. Long as she can. Look after yourselves. Okay, well, that was that. Hello, everyone. Let's see what the comments have to say. Although I also want to know when, when was there never a time to be concerned about teenagers? <laughs> oh, I have mixed feelings about this video. I can understand that. I like some of the things that she says and then other things, not so much. I'm late, but hello, excited to chat. Welcome, Jazz. Can't the concept of feminine evolve? It seems like if we only keep it as a few aesthetic themes, we gatekeep those who don't fit exactly in a box. I agree. Characters are multifaceted. The display of a masculine trait does not mean that a character can't also possess other qualities. I agree. I can absolutely see Galadriel slaying orcs. The series isn't even out yet. Oh my goodness. Another thing, Galadriel was sexually harassed by a highly esteemed male elf. He wanted a single strand of hair. He asked thrice and she denied every time. This is why she gives Gimli three strands. She was literally described as Amazon-like. I wouldn't call that sexual harassment, but that male elf you're talking about was her uncle. In the lore, her hair was described as made of starlight, which the elves revered. Mm, I'm not sure how long this tangent about Vosh applies to the whole arc of this video. <laughs> I feel like there could have been a better example of hiding behind feminism that could have been more on point. I'm just not digging this very fast rant. A big part of negatively framing femininity, at least from my perspective, is always having to be defensive of bodily autonomy on all fronts because your body no longer feels like it belongs to you. <clears throat> I hate that all behaviors are characterized with a gen within a gendered binary. Same. I just, I really don't see myself as like a woman and that's it. I think of myself as a person first and I would think that's fairly normal. Female superheroes are pretty lame, to be honest. Cat alert, yes. Oh. Well, that's sad. 
If I had known, I would have I would have moved this earlier when she was cat loafing so cutely on her chair. I'm getting a lot of redefining feminism to villainize every type that doesn't apply exactly to her, which still isn't intersectional. Yeah, I really don't understand what feminism had to do with this. I mean, sometimes people just write things that they want to write. It's not about their ideology. No, I'm sorry. I can't with this ability to grow slash procreate and its correlation to femininity. How bitter do you have to be to have an opinion about an article based in opinion? No, there is no lack of traditional affinity in our media. <laughs> we don't become masculine or feminine. We simply are. I know this isn't exactly on topic, but I find it very interesting that traditional femininity is often sense existing in thin bodies, including in this video. Very true. <sighs> also, I find it really interesting that many of the examples of strength used are related to motherhood or birth. Can't women be strong as a means within themselves, not solely to exist for children? Well, I find it very interesting that actually some of the things she said, like pretend that you have a strand of pearls reminded me of Mrs. Midwest, pretend you have angel wings or whatever. But um, Mrs. Midwest also says that, you know, women are nurturing. You don't have to nurture, children, nurture children. It's just that something that you can nurture. And I find that interesting that uh, the authentic observer says roughly the same thing, although she seems to mainly be talking about having children. But yeah, I don't know. I am not really convinced that femininity is being, what was it? Desecrated in our society and that feminism is the reason why. But I, I can see why City Man recommended it to me. Very interesting, very interesting. Uh, I did see that she posted a video, I think last week, talking about how male feminists hate women, which, interesting, but I don't know. <clears throat> I just don't see why apparently giving a female character any hint of a masculine trait means they're no longer feminine and we hate femininity. It's like, why can't it be both? Why does it have to be one or the other? But anyway, that uh, is the live stream for this week. I will see anyone who watches this on Monday for a video premiere which will be fun. And yeah, I hope everyone has a good night and a good weekend. I will be packing some more and hopefully selling some of this furniture because none of it is coming with me. And yeah, yeah. Have a great night and I will see you next week.